Hello everybody, welcome back to another 40k 8th edition battle report. We're going to have the incumbent army of 1500 points of mostly Primaris Ultramarines taking on Tyranids this time. Uh, the table isn't fully set up yet, so don't worry about it being a bit barren right now. We're just sorting some dog ears on the old map. But anyway, we'll go over the army list and then randomly decide mission after we've set up the map fully. So we'll take a look at the lists. So here is the Ultramarines and also... Sora was underneath the table because she wanted my attention. You must know this list by now, right? Yeah, I know, I know. I should know this list by now, really, considering how many times it's stayed on as the winner, even though I forgot to mention the scouts last time. But it's led by Marnius Calgar with two lieutenants and also a Primaris Ancient as troops. I'll get them out of the way this time because I forgot them last time. Scouts, this is also going to be the last cameo of the Christmas themed tray. I got another one to use now that we're long past Christmas. The troop choices, two intercessor squads, one with the stalker pattern, one without. I'm not going to be using the better rules for bolter discipline that are running around. I'll use them once they're canon, as it were. It does sound interesting though. We have Hellblasters equipped with the heavy variant of their weapon. We have the Centurion Devastators with grab amps and hurricane bolters. We have the big Redemptor Dreadnought with his full kit, Plasma Incinerator, whatever it's called, Underslung Gatling, etc. And then two Inceptor squads as they come. And I think, oh, and uh, the Armor Ascendant or whatever it's called for the better banner is the relic taken. Ten command points as well. No psychers or anything like that. You should know this list by now. Let's see who is taking them on this time. The power of the blue tree is not able to contain this Tyranid horde. High feet, high fleet rather, not high feet, although some of them have feet. Kraken, 1500 points, and it's being led by the Swarm Lord, but there is also a Brood Lord as the other HQ. Um, the troop choices are a squad of, I think that's 10 Gene Stealers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I think, counted this beforehand, it was 16 Gaunts, just bog standard loadout. We have the, the Tyrant Guard, I think, or Hive Guard, I get them mixed up. It's the ones that are just there as a blade of wounds for the, uh, the Swarm Lord. We also have Death Leaper, new model to the table. We have, as our other troop choice, a Tyranid Warrior Squad with Venom Cannon Upgrade. We have a squad of Xenothropes as they come, the Horospect as it comes, T uh, I was gonna say Tyranid Prime, Trigon Prime. I think it has an upgrade, but I've forgotten which one. Probably the one that makes charging easier so it can charge out of its hold when it appears. The Gene Stealers will be hiding in its burrow with it. And sadly not painted, which is why they're relegated to not being on the legendary blue tray. We have two Thornback Carnifexes with Enhanced Senses. The enhanced Senses makes them 3 plus ballistic skill and standard loadout, so Monstrous Scything Claws and two Devourers with Brain Leech Worms, each as far as weapons go. And that should be more or less 1500 points on the dot, unless I forgot to mention any upgrades. So we're going to finish setting up the table now, we'll maybe do deployment as well and then we'll go over the mission type and what's happening. So we've decided what mission we're playing via D6 roll and we've got the scouring and as part of the setup for that one person gets to decide deployment. Uh, so we have gone for hammer and anvil which is the short table edges with 24 inches between us. Uh, it did turn out that the Eternids would be going first, but we've already rolled for Steel Initiative and Ultramarines did it, so they will be going first instead. But, the scouring, the way it works is there are six objectives, which we'll show you in a second. One of them is randomly selected to be priority objective, which we've already done, so it becomes worth more at the end of the game. Other than that, you've got the usual secondary objectives, Slay the Warlord, First Blood and Linebreaker. Uh, in terms of like things not on the table, the two Inceptor squads for the Ultramarines, and for the Tyranids, the Trigon Prime, the Gene Stealers that are in its tunnel, and Death Leaper. So, this is how the Tyranids have set up. Oh, totally forgot to mention Psychic Powers during the setup of the army lists. Basically everything in the Tyranid army has Catalyst. The exception is the Swarm Lord, which has Catalyst and Onslaught. Because we have these cards now. As well as ones to remind us about stratagems, other than just the command reroll. So, anyway, Tyranids set up like that. One objective is here and we're kind of conga lining to another objective here with the Broodlord there as well Horror Specs, Zone Thropes, Turned Warriors the two Carnifexes, don't look at them, they're not painted there's another objective outside of a deployment zone right there 
Then we have the guard and the swarm lord here. And as we slowly pan around the table here, we have one objective in no man's land, not quite in the middle of the map, but get in there. That randomly got selected as the priority objective, so no army is holding it. Then we have the Redemptor Dreadnought, kind of up to the line. We have one Intercessor Squad guarding an objective, it's a bit hard to see because of the clash of colours. In this Bastion, although the Bastion is not being used, Hellblasters plus one of the Lieutenants. And then round here, that sail objective, the DACA missiles, guarded by other Intercessors. Then here we've got the, the um, I keep forgetting what he's called, the Primaris Ancient, there we go, the other Lieutenant, the Centurion Devastators, the Marnius Calgar. I'm just blanking on all the names today. The Scouts in here, kind of facing down the, the Tyranids over there. And this army has 10 command points, the Tyranids have uh, 5, 6, 7, 8 I think. Five for being a battalion and three, yeah, eight. So eight plays ten in terms of command points. The Ultramarines stole initiative, so they will be going first, but they probably won't be wanting to walk into a very, very hungry line of aliens. But we'll come back for the end of their turn one. End of Ultramarines turn one, and there wasn't much to be done because they were a little bit conservative with their deployment this time since they couldn't do their gunline bubble to take advantage of everything. Uh, the Redemptor Dreadnought was really the only thing that moved at this end of the table. He shot into the Carnifexes with everything and got one of them, this one, down to five wounds remaining. Not too bad. Other than that, the only other shooting due to most things in the army being 36 or 24 was the Snipers, the Sniper Scouts. In this little tower here, with the rerolls from Arnius, shot into the Swarm Lord, got two through, uh, two wounds through in the end, and did not do any damage and didn't get any mortal wounds either. So nothing needed to get passed off to the Tyrant Guard either. So they weren't able to do much. That's all they could do. They're waiting for the Swarm to get a little bit closer before they unleash their full powers. Basically, the plan. Also, it's worth pointing out the normal objectives are worth one point each at the end of the game if they're held. The priority one is worth four. So that's kind of why. This bubble here is kind of walking towards. We count this as any any bit that looks like this is a ladder. So these are ladders, but there's also a ladder on either side. And of course the steps at the far end over there. Anyway, move on to Tyranids, turn one. End of Tyranids, turn one, and again, not much happened. It's usually turn two that stuff starts to kick off in these battle reports, I think. Uh, given that all of this Tyranid army has like three guns tops so it's no surprise really well I guess the guns all have guns but they are too busy camping objectives so over here the swarm lord the horror specs and the guard the tyrant guard all moved up and advanced as far as advanced rolls swarm lord got a six horror specs got a six they got a five so they managed to clear a lot of distance towards a hopefully intimidated calgard gun line over there uh, in terms of psychic powers swarm lord cast catalyst on himself the zone tropes cast Catalyst on the Carnifexes, or sorry, the Thornback Carnifexes, and the Broodlord who moved slightly just so he wasn't the primary target in case something drops down in this nice big empty space over here, he cast Catalyst on the Tyranid Warriors. So what that does is, it's essentially feel no pain. If they lose a wound, there's a, is it a five plus? Is it a five plus or a six plus? Five plus, so a five plus chance to ignore a wound if a wound gets dealt. The only shooting that happened here the Brain Leech Devourers from these two Thornbacks. The Devourer, only one Devourer because one was slightly out of range. It's kind of misplaced because of the, the wobbly model. One Devourer plus Venom Cannon. They all shot into the Redemptor Dreadnought and they got him down to 12 wounds. So they didn't really do much. The wound rolls on the Devourers in particular were horrendous. Hit rolls were fine on a 3 plus. The wound rolls needing fives was just appalling. So. Fairly ineffective on both sides for turn one. Let's go into turn two for the Ultramarines. End of Ultramarines turn two and some interesting stuff happened because we actually used a stratagem. Other than the command rerolls, we opted in our shooting phase to use orbital bombardment, kind of a throwback to Dawn of War and the old editions, I guess, for three command points. So this side is down to seven, but as far as movement, Marnus had to stay still so he could use Orbital Bombardment. The Centurions, 
Lieutenant Banner guy kind of just shuffled around him a little bit. The scout stayed there. Uh, over the other side of the table, the Redemptor Dreadnought was the only thing that moved. The Redemptor Dreadnought opted to fire everything into the Tyrant, sorry, Tyranid Warriors, playing Resident Evil, so Tyrant is a word on my mind right now. Tyranid Warriors did not do anything to them. The additional funeral pain roll helped a lot. But, this is where interesting stuff happened. The Orbital Bombardment is you pick a point on the map, anything within 6 inches, on a 50-50 chance, or a 5 plus if it's a character, gets D3 mortal wounds. So, hit all three of those. Let's zoom in a little bit. So the Swarm Lord got hit, the Horror Specs got missed, and the Tyrant Guard got missed. Uh, sorry, got hit, rather. So one guard died outright to the blast. The Swarm Lord got hit for two mortal wounds. Somehow, they were able to do their protection thing to dive in the way. I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to be able to do a get down Mr. President from a death ray from space, but apparently you can. So that killed another one, and uh, in the shooting phase, split shots of the Centurions over here. They fired their hurricane bolters into the Tyrant's, uh, the Tyrant Guard rather, hoping to finish them off for first blood. This is why you should never split your shots. He lived on one wound, so they did not get first blood. And they shot their grav amps into the horror specs. Did pretty well, got it down to nine wounds, but he is a, a large lad and has a lot of wounds remaining. Uh, the snipers fired into the swarm lord again. They got two mortals through. Actually, oh yeah, that's right, he survived on one wound from the, the orbital bombardment. He got killed by taking the mortal wounds from the sniper shots. Over the other end of the table, the two inceptor squads decided to leap in as was expected. The first squad, this squad here, shot into the Gaunt, killed nine of them. So that kind of, it took away the protection on the Broodlord. The other squad shot into the Broodlord, didn't do too well. Got him down to five wounds, which is just, he lost one wound. And they also could not an attempt, they couldn't attempt to charge rather, because they had to start nine inches away. Once they got rid of the Gaunt lair in the way, that's now too long to even make it, to even bother risking it. So they might get punished by the Broodlord as we go into Turnids, turn two. End of Turnid's turn two and the Broodlord opted to show the Inceptors the error of their ways by getting into combat with them and murderizing two of them. The other one survived, that's the Sergeant. He survived, did not break morale, but also was not able to hurt the Broodlord back. So they're in combat as is. The Gaunts over here just kind of consolidated their position on one objective because they can no longer stretch between two. So this Turnid objective is now just totally ignored. Over here, the Zone Throat Brood is now holding this objective. They're meant to be on there, but they're, they're too wobbly, so they're around it. They're holding that so that the Turnid Warriors could move up, as did the Carnifexes. They all shot at the Redemptor Dreadnought with the addition of... Trigon Prime. Very difficult to find a place for him, which is nine inches away from the enemy. The, the Space Marines accidentally deployed very well in terms of making that difficult, so he had to pop up there that far back with enough room barely to fit in the Gene Stealers as well. He shot his electric spine tail thingy at the Redemptor Dreadnought as well. All said and done, the Redemptor is down to six wounds, so he's getting there. Over the far end, it's where interesting stuff happened. The Horror Specs charged the Centurion Devastators, didn't take any wounds on the way in, I think, uh, but got into combat. The Tyrant Guard then charged and got into combat as well. The Horror Specs managed to kill one of the Devastators, put one wound on another one. He went down to seven wounds. I don't remember if that... No, that wasn't in combat, so that was on the way in. So he did take some hits from the Grav Amps on the way in. He's down to seven wounds regardless. The surviving Centurions opted to put all their attacks onto the Tyrant Guard, managed to take his one wound out. It was a mistake charging him in because that gave the Ultramarines first blood. It's the first entire unit to be wiped out. The Swarm Lord failed his charge, that's what he gets for being behind everybody. So that's as it stands. Things are about to get very, very bloody as we move into turn three for the Ultramarines. So despite that being the end of Ultramarines turn three, there was casualties on both sides. Let's start over here. The Ultramarines chapter tra uh, tactic means they can fall back and shoot with a minus one to their hit. Couple that with re-rolls from the Lieutenant and Marnius meant that the surviving Devastators weren't too hindered by backing off. They Marnius, the lieutenant, just the lieutenant as well, shot into the horror specs, murdered him, unfortunately. My beautiful favourite Turnid model has been killed once again. The Ancient over here 
shot underneath here into the gene stealers, killed one of them right there. This unit also shot into the gene stealers, did nothing. It's arguable whether they could have even made that shot anyway because of the angle, but counted it as they could. The sniper shot into the swarm lord, they got a couple of mortal wounds through his funeral pain, and he is down to. I can't read that from here. 10 wounds, I believe. I think it's 10 wounds. Finally, the Hellblasters can do something. Massive mistake putting them so far back, even with a 36 inch range. They shot into the Carnifex. The Redemptor shot everything into the Carnifexes as well. They survived, but he then charged. The Redemptor Fist is just so ridiculously powerful. He stomped this Carnifex, put this one down to four wounds. In return, the Carnifex did not manage to do anything back, so they're still surviving. It was kind of like a try and do damage before you explode tactic. And then over here, Hubris got the better of the Inceptor squads. The the captain who was locked in combat fell back, shot this Inceptor squad, shot into the Swarm Lord, did nothing. They then all charged, they got their meteoric, no not meteoric, descent crushing charge, that's the one, where they have a 6 plus chance to do a mortal wound, didn't do anything. In combat they did manage to get him down one wound, in return he put all his attacks on the full strength squad and murdered them with like 7 wounds. He is ridiculously powerful if you let him hit. So the Inceptors managed to get themselves killed on that turn. We're now going to go into turn 3 for the Turnids. Quick addendum of a rule that's too long forgotten to be changed this game. Totally forgot that when uh, Carnifex Broods deploy on the map they have to be deployed in cohesion but then from that point on they count as separate units so they both wouldn't have been drawn into combat, they could have moved independently, separated from each other. Had the same issue in a tabletop game recently with the, as in tabletop simulator that is, with the, uh, the Death Dreads or whatever they were called for the Orcs. Uh, Carnifexes have the same rule, totally forgot so we're not going to be able to do that at this point because it's too late. Did catch it though, too late. End of turn it's turn 3 and we're just going to work our way clockwise around the table rather than going through each phase individually. Perhaps not surprisingly, Mr. Broodlord absolutely annihilated the final Inceptor, wiping them out. He then consolidated further towards the objective that he's probably just going to sit on for the rest of the game. As are the Gaunts who are following his example. Over here the Zones Ropes gave the invulnerable save to the Trigon Prime although it wasn't needed. Trigon Prime used its movement to hop up here and then charged into Redemptor in combat did his combat first because he charged, he absolutely annihilated the Redemptor, did 7 wounds when it had 6 left, so it went careening through the wall here and has exploded, destroying the poor Redemptor. He did fairly well, he, he survived a lot longer than I thought. The Gene Steelers moved up here, they declared a charge against the Zinchurians just to eat up the Overwatch. It was a 10 inch charge, it wasn't likely they'd make it, they only took 1 wound on the way in so it wasn't too bad. Also totally forgot to mention, Death Leaper has finally decided to infiltrate and it might be a bit obvious what he's doing this for. He's chosen to infiltrate there, right next to the uh, the primary objective, the, the one worth more. Over here, the Swarm Lord made his charge against the Centurion Devastators. He utterly annihilated them on the charge, did not give them a chance to hit back. Totally forgot actually they could have had a chance to hit back. Let's see if it would have happened one does get to hit back. If that makes any difference to his wounds I'll cover them in an addendum but he, other than that he annihilated them. He meant to, he probably wanted to consolidate a little bit further forwards. Basically we're gonna see the, the new showdown between new Marnia Skalgar versus old Swarm Lord. I'm kind of excited for how that's gonna go as we go into turn four for the Ultramarines. Small addendum but not the one I planned because the Centurion that got one last burst of strength didn't do anything to the Swarm Lord. The Tyranid Warriors shot into this intercessor squad, killed one of them. Nothing else happened. End of Ultramarines turn 4. The intercessors, the four of them that are surviving, plus the hell blasters up here, all shot into the Tyranid warriors, killed two of them. The one with the venom cannon survived. He, well, they're immune to morale tests while they're in uh, synapse range and they are synapse creatures so they're perfectly fine. That's why I've not really been mentioning it for the turn side. He's fine. Sole survivor of the squad though, nothing else kind of happened on this area. The intercessors here rapid fired as did the Ancient and the Lieutenant into the Gene Sailors. Only three of them lived, the rest of them are dead but they're within range of the Swarm Lord Synapse. So they're also not going to run anywhere. Totally forgot to mention at the top of the 
the army list only just now remembered why we were handling morale stuff. The Swarm Lord, not the Swarm Lord, sorry, the Brood Lord took the Norn Crown, which gave him a bigger radius for his synapse. But the big affair of the new Papa Smurf versus the Swarm Lord. I was very much looking forward to see how this went. As it turns out, they both kind of were even hard. Oh, although the Swarm Lord started with less wounds because he was shot on the way in earlier in the game. Anyway, Marnius managed to knock three wounds off of the Swarm Lord's ten he had remaining, so he's down to seven. In return, the Swarm Lord managed to get two damage through to Marnius. Well, no, sorry, he got three, but Marnius halves damage and then rounds up, so he took two and has six wounds left. So it was a stalemate as we go into turn his turn four. End of Turnid's turn 4, the Broodlord just made sure he was right next to the objective so he was holding it. So currently, Turnids are holding 3 of the objectives on their side of the map, that's a point each. They also currently hold the high value one, which is 4 points. And they are making a big push towards the objectives held by the Space Marines. So the surviving Carnifex and the Bioelectric Spine from the Trigon Prime and the Venom Cannon shot into the Intercessors only killed one more. He's not dead, he just fell over because of the crater being a little bit wobbly. So one more fell over there. Now the Gene Sealers charged the Lieutenant, none died on the way in. They got five, uh, three of his wounds down, or off of him, so he's down to two wounds. He did nothing back, so he's kind of stuck with them there. Now in combat, the Swarm Lord did not hurt Marnius. In return, Marnius did not hurt him. So the Turnids opted to use Adrenaline Surge for three command points. Yes, three, which gets or gives the unit a chance to fight again immediately. He did. He got six damage through to Marnius. Thankfully, he has that roll that halves it, but he's now down to three, so things are looking a, a lot riskier for him. So the Ultramuse might be a little bit cowardly here in order to try and get a win as we move into turn five, which is going to be their last turn. End of the final Ultramarine's turn, and... The Hellblasters here and the surviving Intercessors opted to shoot everything into the Carnifex, deeming that to have the most ranged danger. Only got it down to two wounds though, so it survived. Other than that, Marnius was a little bit of a... I was going to say coward, but let's say tactical genius instead. He did his Ultramarine fall back to allow himself to shoot at it, at the Swarm Lord rather. The Ancient to shoot at it, the Scouts and the Intercessors rapid firing. They got him down to two wounds wasn't enough to kill him, so Marnius and the Ancient both charged. Marnius did exactly two wounds, and he is breathing a sigh of relief because he killed the Swarm Lord for Slay the Warlord. Over here, the Intercessor Lieutenant, or rather the Primaris Lieutenant, sorry, killed one Gene Sailor, he's gone and dead. The two survivors murdered him, consolidated towards Marnius. However, the Ancient is in the way, so they can't go after him directly. And now we're going to go and see what the Turnids do on their final turn, although they don't really need to do much. So at the end of a really quick turn, five that is, for the Turnids, we've reached the end of the game. The Carnifex, the Trigon Prime and the Turnid Warrior are moved up, all moved up rather, shot into the Intercessors. It was the Bioelectric Pulse with Containment Spines, which is the name of this thing's tail, that did it. Killed the Intercessors, knocking them off that objective. Hellblasters are sitting twiddling their thumbs in the Bastion. Terrible, terrible decision putting them in there. But that was it. The, well, over here, the, the Gene Sealers charged the Primaris Ancient. One died on the way into Overwatch. In combat, they didn't do anything to each other. So, basically a draw there. So, we're all going to be back in a second with the recap. So, at the end of the game, somewhat surprisingly, the Ultramarines have finally been defeated. Even if it didn't come down to objectives, which is what mattered here, it does look like overall they would have just been worn down. The Tyranids made a, a very good push early on. They didn't take enough casualties on the way in. It let them push in. But in terms of points, the Ultramarines got first blood because they killed the Tyrant Guard. They got Slay the Warlord for killing the Swarm Lord. And they hold one normal objective only, giving them a total of three points. A little disappointing. The Tyranids, on the other hand, they have Linebreaker because they're in the Ultramarine deployment, all the way over that end. They have three normal objectives, one, two, three, giving them three points, and they hold, thanks to Death Leaper who did nothing, so still don't know what he does really, he holds a superior objective which gives them four, 
for a total of 8. So 8 plays 3. The Ultramarines have finally failed, even though Marnius technically defeated the Swarmlord. In terms of things that were a problem, really it all came down to what happened over here. The push of the Swarmlord, the Horospex and the Tyrant Guard just advancing their way up here forced Marnius, the Centurion Devastators, the, the Primaris Ancient and the Primaris Lieutenant to back up instead of doing their original plan which was scale the ladder here and fight here. They should have just pushed and held this. Would have been harder but this was the thing that mattered. Didn't consider until it was too late that old Death Leaper can just infiltrate and appear there and be claiming it. Which is a little bit unfortunate. But as I say if it went on carrying on with combat this side of the board would have been fine there's only a single gene sealer on it. The Brute Lord is tough but he's at the other end of the table so even if we went seven turns I'm not sure the Ultramarines would be tabled, but it wouldn't go the other way for sure. So yeah, the list has been defeated. I'm, I'm not sure who the Tyranids are going to face next time, but they're now the new incumbent winner. I do have another army that is being prepped, but it takes a while to get them all ready, as you're aware. I, I, I try and have as very little unpainted stuff on the field as possible. Um, but thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this 40k battle report. We are also doing occasional ones in Tabletop Simulator. And unlike these, they're not edited, so you see every dice roll, so you can criticise every roll that's done wrong if you want. But thank you for the support, and I'll hopefully see you next time. Ta-ta for now.